So I personally consider Selinka to be a rushdown character. Uh, she wants to race to her in game yeah. pretty quickly. She uses yeah, two definitely. characters, so she has transformations. Uh, well, I should say she is a seven frost character. Yeah. And let's see. I remember specifically towards the end of playtesting, she was one of the last characters to be finished up, and there was a bit of a mad rush to balance her. Uh, mm -hmm. Wasn't there a whole question about whether her exceed ability how many cards we wanted, like how powerful we wanted to make it. Like eventually it sold for every five cards that were sealed gave her plus one power. Yeah, that one stabilized but, uh, a little bit earlier. Um, there were some other elements of her kit that I remember shuffling around a little bit. Uh, J2SO knows more about that than I did. He was very actively involved. I played against him as part of the great uh -huh. Slinka rebalancing right at the end of things. But I don't remember very many of the details. I remember much more broken versions of the neutral dance. Uh, I I know that ability changed. Actually, this ability isn't current. This is an outdated reference card. Whoops. I guess I should, I should fix that. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think this might have changed. At any rate, broadly speaking, the stuff that I'm afraid of is Wishing Ward and Moonfall. Uh, Wishing yeah. Ward tends to deal eight to eleven damage. This is a ton of power, like an absolutely. Wishing Ward is very significant because it is one of the few cards that can just beat Focus. Mm -hmm. Yep, it crushes Focus and sweep through raw damage if you initiate, and if you, even on defense, it crushes Focus. So defensive options are not necessarily safe uh, here. On range one, this is a very reliable attack, especially if she has you near the corner. Moonfall is terrifying because of that hit effects. It lets her double dip on her boosts. So Moonfall and Dispelling Horn both have this property of you get to gain your power bonus, and then you get to reuse those boosts again, because your character really lets her gain power bonuses, basically. She puts cards into plays boosts. So Moonfall lets her double dip on that and on the light boost, most notably. Dispelling Horn lets her seal her boosts that we're going to get sealed anyway to gain armor, even after she already gained power, which makes it really safe against slower moves. So those are just some of her key tools. Uh, this is her best transformation. I'm not going to go into why right now. I should figure out who I'm playing. By the way, if anybody uh, please feel free to suggest characters. I've got my lineup, but I don't really have a preference for what order I go in. Yeah. I'll probably start with Bison, because he's really straightforward to explain, at least the way that I play him. Is I have enjoyed Bison. Uh, I mean, one thing that I've had trouble with in general is... Uh, enjoying a lot of season three characters partially because i usually bring out ken and ryu and i end up playing <clears throat> ken who i am horrible at piloting mm, ken is deceptively uh, difficult to play i actually think he's the harder of the two of them no oh, absolutely uh but yeah bison and guile in particular are two uh season three characters that i've actually enjoyed playing bison because huge gauge and guile because big hand guile is a thing heck yes he most certainly is. All right. At your leisure. Call yes. it. All right. Uh, I'll take first. Very well. All right. All so, right. so, as Bison, my my goal essentially is. Uh, Build up gauge, throw, threaten big numbers, and then throw big numbers. And when I threaten and when I throw is more or less up to me. That's what makes me a little bit flexible in how I enact my game plan. Bison Dollars is an absolutely amazing boost on a pretty mediocre attack, so that card is almost always boosted. Psycho Power is horrifying. It's plus five power. Unstoppable is incredibly good because of that stun immunity value in particular. But it also combines well with Psycho Power to give you a plus 5 power stun immune critical attack that doesn't necessarily cost gauge. His ultras are his most obvious payouts, but he can get decent value out of most of his attacks. So, generally, you're going to see me go boost, boost, usually boost, usually boost, strike, boost, strike. Uh, so, in accordance with that, my early game does not look like I this. will be mole getting two. I'm mole four. I got just what I wanted to see here. 
by some dollars, you have more cards than me, so I will draw three. Oh, fun. Then one for end of turn, which means I'll have to discard a card. Anyone watching? This discard is not bad, because once I get a couple card, a couple more cards in discard, I can boost uh, Psycho Booster if I have it or draw it between now and then, which will let me immediately gain three gauge at the cost of revealing my hands. Part of my objective uh, as a moderately technical player is try to make sure that hand reveal doesn't matter when I do it. Right, just go ahead and transform this. All right, that's pretty excellent. So this is functionally plus one power, plus one armor uh, for the second half of the game, which is really, really good. As an attack, it's good, but it does require a little setup and it also would require us to be at close range, which we aren't currently. Yeah. So giving that to play right away makes perfect sense to me. All right. Just one of those things, if you have it in your starting hand, yeah, why not? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna use my character ability. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll do this. Draw, draw for a turn, and discard that. Bison's character ability lets him add a card from his hand to his gauge, then draw a card, and then you'll still draw for the end of your turn. So that put me over hand side to turn side to discard. There. Which once again I plan on using to my advantage. One of the things that I find very important at the start of the game is just to be looking through the opponent's deck and see what they can do at range four. Uh, it's very possible that I'm paranoid, <laughs> but, you know, it, yeah. it works out. I mean, uh, Selenka has good openers. She has a fast eye yeah. in Moonfall, and she has a projectile, yes. which automatically creates mix-up. Uh, Bison does not. He has a dive, and then he has dive. That's it. Okay, That's so I'm going to take the prepare action, which will allow me to draw one card. I will then uh, seal one two cards face down uh, for plus two power. Okay. So those are in play as continuous boost. And, and would be then I get one for a turn. Yep. All right. I strike. So you strike. And what that is probably going to mean is you have a speed four attack. Unless you are playing defensively. Which very well, well might be something you would do. So, I'm just going to do this because even if I trade. Oh, I see. I am playing more defensively than you thought. I do not want to get hit by Moonfall. Yep. So, to prevent you from double dipping, I'm going to cross out in advance, which also is safe against the EX Moonfall, which will seal these and you don't get any power bonuses off them. Your turn. Right. Also, puts us at my favorite well range of Alrighty. I have two gauge. Mm hmm. Muting on Discord. Uh, my opponent is eyeing some of my criticals. Probably he's looking in particular at Head Stomp, and then maybe a little bit at um, uh, Somersault Skull Diver. Both very Psycho Pressure right. is particularly nice at range three, isn't it? Psycho Pressure would be great because it'd be as uh, long as one. you uh, advance through and then retreat through. Go faster, anyways. Mm -hmm. It is under curve here, so it functions just like dive, where it would get me into and then out of close range. Okay, so it's more like dive and cross at the same time, but details. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and spend one force to advance. Okay. I'm going to take a slight risk here. Uh, so there was another reason that I crossed out, which is I now have three cards in my discard pile. Ah, oh, I see. Yep. So, uh, the risk I'm taking is hoping that you don't have both a reading and a punish tool in that hand. So, pressure sweep, focus... Somersault Skull Diver. So, y'all may note that this is a little bit different from the Bison play that you would have heard about uh, in Mad's uh, lesson. 
I'm not currently playing a very mix-up-y bison. I'm playing a very face-up bison. However, if All I'm right. aggressive uh, enough with my economy, I'm okay. it won't matter. All right, your turn. I'm just going to go ahead and strike. Okay, so I'm most afraid of Wishing Ward. Um... So, what's the best way to beat Wishing Ward? I could play Psycho Crusher. Or I could play this EX that I just drew. No! Oh. Well, I do have Wishing Ward, so that is unfortunate. Yep. Thanks to the EX, I do lose both copies of Sweep, but I didn't have to sacrifice a Gauge, which I kind of like. Unfortunate. Alright. Speaking of Gauge, let's get this last known normal out of my hands and gain plus 5 power on my next attack. Hmm. Well, I'm going to strike. Me. Alright, so the only safe option here is Cross. I don't really care if you play Cross. Critical Storm Salt Skull Diver. Expecting to hit a Dispelling Horn here if it's not Cross. I cross. Neat. I take four. I'll advance two to my favorite range, and I'll miss. Alright. Hmm. Let's put this gauge to even better use. By being a tempo monster. Change cards four. Your turn. Alrighty, I've got a bit of a disadvantage with hand here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change cards and spend one, two, three force to get a total of four cards. Hmm. I'll name Focus. If you have a copy of Focus, discard it. I do not. Then let's see the hands. Right here. To dispel, roar, roar. Seems good. Your turn. Uh, you might very well have a reading in hand, which is kind of scary. So I'm going to prepare. I'm going to boost two cards face down. Yep. So this means I no longer know if he actually has uh, all of those cards in hand. So don't forget to draw for in a turn, please. Ah, yes. Thank you. Mm hmm. Hmm. All right. Let's live dangerously. Uh oh. So now again, I'm gambling that you don't have the reading even yet. So grasp, sliding kick, assault, dive, focus. This is not safe. I'm not even sure I'd recommend it. No, this is thing. not safe. Very not safe for you. Well then, will you punish? Fortunately, I do not have a focus in hand. <laughs> Excellent. Or if I do, I choose not to use it. So I will use Purifying Roar's boost in order to draw four cards. Mm -hmm. Plus one for a turn. Mm -hmm. And I will discard Grasp. All right. Let's play the reading. Are you good on these? I'm about to pick, up, pick them up. Uh, yep, you are fine. Go for it. All right. Focus. Uh, you're asking for focus. I am. I don't have a focus here. No, nothing. All right, well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So, the cards you showed me. If you are trying to murder a focus, what do you do? Uh, and you did not make it critical either. Nope. So, I think it's pretty probable that you have something like a spike. Although you could just be trying to bait it out. Spike dive, block cross. Uh, I'm out of crosses, actually. Dive, yeah, yeah. Dive is an option for you. Spike dive and block are all that pretty is fair true. options. Assault. Correct. 
All right. I will take six. Those are seals. Your turn. Is indeed my turn. All right, I will strike. Really? Okay, so that's probably wishing more. <laughs> so my best option here is Psycho Punisher. Critical Wild Swing. Oh, that ain't that. All right, how much are you gonna seal? Yep. All right, I'm going to seal. Do, 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 do. One, uh, two. Ceiling two? Yep. Cool, I take seven. Just two. Alright, quick back dash. I am at range three. <laughs> Let's. Who's fierce? I'm going to EX transform this. My opponent is out of crosses, and he's out one copy of Assaults, so, and one copy of Moonfall, so I'm not expecting a speed 6 card, so I can pretty freely assume that my Odd choice, EX perhaps. Assault will land. Not fair enough. It's another transformed. Pierce. But more so. Head <laughs> Stomp is... Particularly vicious right here. It's pretty good. Pretty good. The boost pure fine roar. Okay. Or one and discard five. Neat. Ex attack. Ex attack. All right. What do we have here? Oh, uh, that could be an ultra, couldn't it? It, it could. It could be psycho punisher. Could be the other one though. Both copies of the other one are down. Could be Psycho Punisher. Have you have you used Head Stop yet? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have. No, you have not. So both of those are terrifying. Actually, terrifying is a boost in Sagat's kit. Ha. All right, so Mads in quite a tizzy. You're not making it critical. Um, because I'm not taking advantage of implied threat. I'm just throwing big puncher. numbers. Which does put me at a potential long-term disadvantage. But on the other hand, I get to throw big numbers really fast, which is fun. Uh, the follow-up here, by the way, is going to be to spend one force from which Gage to boost head stomp so that I can punisher. threaten Psycho Punisher, which is Will stunning unit nine damage. So I have a very good follow-up here. Eight damage. Uh, what would be? Uh... EX Psycho Punisher? No, that would be 12 damage. Oh, did you make it critical? I, I have two Fierces in play. Oh, you're right. You are <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> I do so believe that in this situation I'm somewhat screwed. Ideally. I wild swing. Yeah, that works. Alright. 
Assault. assault. Yep. Nine power. Please take nine. I will take nine. My advantage. Spinning one force. Stun immunity. My attack is critical. Yes. Interesting. Part of me wants to exceed. <laughs> I mean, not this turn. I'll tell you that. Because you will lose instantly if you exceed right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to prepare. OK. So I draw one. I will then do, do, This face down, this face down, and this face down. Alrighty, drop it and turn. You stack. Okay. So it will be critical. Mm -hmm. This is unlikely to be Psycho Crusher, to say the least. Uh, it'd be Psycho Punisher, but in, in that case, say the least, uh, yeah. you've only got three. You've only got three. Uh, I believe there is only one EX left in my deck that hits. Yeah, because it uses Salt Dive Cross. Your normals don't really have options here. Yeah, I mean, I have EX Block, but, like, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Very no. So Psycho Punisher, you've already used Somersault Skull Diver. Yeah, so I, I've... Sliding Kick. And, and it, this, it's, this is Head Stomp, so this Psycho is Face Punisher. Up. It's Face Up, yeah, Psycho Punisher. Right, it's Psycho Punisher. Mm -hmm. So that means that's uh, Speed 5. Yep. Speed 5, Sun Immunity, 10 Power. Oh, you made it critical. Okay. It, it, yeah, I've got this boost, remember? Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Which of these ways is speed five? I can't really retreat, so I'll just use Dispelling War. There you go. That's how you do it. So you'll be able to double dip those boosts. You've got seven power. I take six. And then uh, you I have, have six, six power. power. Uh, six, six power. Three four. plus three. I only had. I can't do math. All right. Uh, wait, oh, wait, no, no, no you, you're right. Yeah. You're right, you're right, because of uh, my transformation. Yeah, yeah. got a sealed copy. All right. And then I will take... Um, so I took six, four. and then ten power, you have seven armor, right? So you take three. All right. My advantage. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, let's see. With my advantage... Hmm... Let's take a look at these wild swings. I prepare. All right, you'll notice that both of his foci are sealed. That means I don't need to worry about hand information. So, assuming that I survive the next turn, which is, to say the least likely, since both of his uh, buy some dollars is the way to go. Hmm. Hmm. Options, options. Uh, 
I think I will take this opportunity to go ahead and seed. All right. So. So now I get a plus two power bonus on all of my attacks. Yep. And if you have a copy sealed, that is plus three, thanks to that uh, transformation over there. Just a good last bite. Yep. All right, well, five some dollars. As a courtesy, I will reveal my hand to save the trouble of counting cards. Yeah, oh, fine. Head stump, sliding kick, start to pressure block, block. Mm-hmm. Your turn? Yep. I will strike. Okay. I played the block. Sweet. Alright, let's see what I lose. Nothing important. Alright. So that's nine power coming at you? Uh, yep. So. Four. Eight. <laughs> nine armor? Oh, ten armor, mm -hmm. actually. But details. <laughs> Hello, Jay. How's it going? So, Change cards three. Not bad. Yeah, a bit of a lag here. Yep. Oh, Always go. happens when somebody joins the room. Your turn. Okay. To do here. Goodness. <clears throat> I have an advantage here. Mm -hmm. What shall I do with it? strike. Alright, you're running out of slow options, so that's probably a fast option. Could be a moon player. Wild Sway. That's a fast option. I'm not quite dead. You've got not seven quite. power. Uh, I seven take power. five. You take three after mm -hmm. armor. Your turn. My turn. strike. I mean, ideally this is the grasp or the swift exorcism, since this is, you know, this is in-game, you just need fast stuff. However, if you didn't have that, I honestly don't like the chances of you not having that. I feel like you're almost guaranteed to have it. Yeah, because like an ultra or a grasp or a swift exorcism are all very solid plays here. could play to be the one thing that I don't think you're playing, which seems questionable. Or, you know, Wild Swing, hook that block. And a block. Good game. Yeah, that'll be good. Have an answer. I was just... Uh, I kind of wanted to, like, back up to range three, just so I could use Purifying Roar, because I've got, like, five different normals sealed. I'm surprised you didn't just play it from range three instead of throwing the Assault. 
Uh, it wouldn't have killed is the thing. Fair and enough. then uh, it was better as a defensive option. Yeah, plus, yeah, gain, gaining advantage was pretty important because preserving that edge. If I'd had one turn off, I would have bisoned all right again and probably reloaded. Or if you had fewer cards, then I would have just CC'd a bunch or struck with cross. You know, anything I need to get out of there. Yep. Good game. Yeah, good game. I'll have to play Selenka more often. She's very fun. Mm -hmm. Which is not something I can say about every single character. <laughs> yeah, to each their own. Uh, with regards to Bison, so I, I did a Bison line that I find decently inter in enjoyable and entertaining, which is uh, set up to throw a million damage at your opponent, maybe like three times per game, and then do it. Like, use Unstoppable, use Psycho Power, um, boost Bison Dollars, use Quick Backdash for setup. Use Shadow Intelligence for setup sometimes. I often like to go to range one and then use Psycho Power together with Critical Somersault Gold Diver to just deal nine damage in armor. And then I do Psycho Booster and I strike with Psycho Punisher. That's like a fun Bison line. Uh, my favorite yeah. Bison line is Jin Remy Bison, where I try to end the game with exactly one of each normal and gauge. This is a mean <laughs> line, but it's very, very fun. I don't actually recommend it. I'm very glad that I had uh, Dispelling Horn with three boosts to trash that one round. Yeah, that's what you need. This card is is pretty over or pretty underrated. Excuse me. Like the amount of value you can get out of that against anything that would normally trade with it is insane. Me. Well then. I was considering uh, EX focusing, and then, yeah, I don't want to do that. I mean, Dispelling Horn is like focus, it's just fast instead of slow. Yes. It has a bunch of armor. 